let's play Species, Subspecies or Social Construct, a game for enhancing cognitive dissonance. In case you don't know, cognitive dissonance is the state of having inconsistent thoughts, beliefs or attitudes, and it's extremely important in today's world. In fact, if you don't have enough, you could run into a spot of trouble. So here we have a Neanderthal and a European. What some people aren't yet aware of is that Neanderthals and humans actually interbred 100,000 years ago. What they forgot to mention in that headline is that they only interbred with certain groups of humans. But that doesn't matter. So, do you think Neanderthals and Europeans are A. A separate species B. A separate subspecies or C. A social construct They're a different species! So pat yourself on the back if you got that one right. Here we have a sub-Saharan African and a European. Are they A, a separate species, B, a subspecies, or C, a social construct? Of course they are a social construct. Here we have a polar bear and a grizzly bear. What a lot of people don't realize about polar bears and grizzly bears is that they can actually mate and produce fertile offspring. So do you think that they're A, a separate species, B, a separate subspecies, or C, a social construct? They're actually a different species. So here we have a Sub-Saharan African and an East Asian. Can you guess what they are? They are a social construct, that's right. You may or may not be aware that there are five distinct types of tigers living today. We've got the Bengal tiger, the Siberian tiger, the Indo-Chinese tiger, the Malaysian tiger, and the Sumatran tiger. As you can see, they're all slightly different. We have slightly different coloring and slightly different markings. So. What do you think they are? Different species, different subspecies, or a social construct? Well, they are in fact different subspecies. A subspecies is a taxonomic category that ranks below species, usually a fairly permanent, geographically isolated race. Oh, I've heard that word before. Did you know that there are 22 species of extinct humans? Here are two examples, the Homo habilis and the Neanderthal. And you can see that the Neanderthal has slightly wider eye socket, slightly different shaped top of the head, more prominent cheekbones, and perhaps the jaw is slightly different as well. So there are all these differences, and because of this, we can recognize that this is a completely different species. Here's a European skull and an Australian Aboriginal skull. Now, you can see that the Australian Aboriginal has completely different shaped crown on the head, different shaped eye sockets, different shaped nose area, and slightly wider or more prominent jaw. The cheekbones are slightly more prominent. So this is a social construct. That's because there's only one species of humans left. But there are about nine different social constructs left. Here's a list of social constructs. Oh, um, okay, well if you just ignore the parts that say genetic, um, then you can see quite clearly that there are like nine different types of social construct, and yeah, next. Uh, so if in doubt, geographically distinct groups of animals are generally different subspecies if they can produce fertile offspring, and different species if they can't, while geographically distinct groups of humans are social constructs if they're still living, and a different species if they're dead, even if they produce fertile offspring with the ancestors of non-Africans in the past. I know this can get a bit confusing, but if you just remember one rule for animals and another rule for humans, you won't offend anyone or get called racist. Here's what happens to people who don't practice cognitive dissonance sufficiently. We see this so much among scientists, it's just ridiculous. Most of them are exercising cognitive dissonance pretty well, it's just the odd scoundrel. Like James Watson. I mean, he won the Nobel Prize for discovering the structure of DNA, he led the Human Genome Project, he taught biology at Harvard, uh, he did so many, so many things. He was world famous, but he now claims that no one wants to admit he exists and that he's been ostracized and needs to sell his Nobel Prize for cash 
because he said something that you're not supposed to say um, and fail to exercise cognitive dissonance. Anyway, moving on. Always remember that scientific principles are universally applicable. So long as the findings don't offend anyone, in which case the scientist who reports the findings should be fired. And that is how you do objective science. Thanks for watching.